So we're on Masech the Shabbos, Daf Mem Vav, uh, forty-six. Mm-hmm. So we said that a menorah, a big candelabra, we said was usher because it was it it it, it was a, a large thing, and it's koveya, it's makom, and that's why. If you move, it's considered like part of a building itself, like a construct. And therefore, if you move it, it's like you're destroying a building. So the Gemara says, what about a kilas khatani? The, the uh, special bed that the chassans would build. It says, you could move it and you could, you could move it around, even though it's a kli, it's a big kli kavua. And how come we're not choishish because of binyan there? So we reject the attempt to explain why the menorah was usher because it was big, and say rather el omer by bishol chulis. We're talking about a menorah like an erector set menorah. It was made out of pieces, and we're concerned that in moving it, the menorah will break into pieces. And then you're going to come build it up again. And it's like you're going to build a Kli on Shabbos. So that's the Gzairah because of that. Great. So why did Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish permit you to do it? Lachor, it's a reason to make a Gzairah. Or it says, my Chulius ke'en Chulius. Means it wasn't really an erector set made out of pieces. The Ispe Chidki. It looks like it. It's got like indents in it. That when you look at it, it looks like it's made out of pieces, but it's really just for decoration. So therefore, these are all gzeras, hilka. Chulius, if the menorah is actually made like an erect, like uh, in pieces, then we don't care. Because we're concerned if you move it, it's going to break, you're going to assemble it, you're going to be talking Gdola nami, the ispe chidki. Even a big menorah, even if it was not made out of pieces, it was made with these indents, it still would be prohibited. Because you, you might think if you can move this one, you could move an erector set one. And you can't move an erector set one. So we guys are a god a lot of god. Where did they argue? By a small one. The katana, the ispe chidki. A katana that had uh, these marks in it. Marisar, Azrina. We don't have to be goyzer because it's small and we don't have to, they're not going to get confused. Everybody knows, do we make a goyzer or do we not make a goyzer? Okay. Now, we said before, yesterday, that Rabbi Yochanan said that the halach is like Rabbi Yehuda, that isle moksa. Did Rabbi Yechidon actually say that? Rabbi We have a statement throughout Shas that Rabbi Yechidon has said that if there's an anonymous Mishnah, a Mishnah that is not quoting a specific Tana, uh, like, like, our, like many Mishnahs, it's Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Yehuda, but some Mishnahs don't have any named person there. So that's called a Stam Mishnah. We're going to learn somewhere else that most Stam Mishnas were Rab Meir. Rab Meir, who was the, the Talmud, Rabbi Akiva, and the Rabbi of Rabbi Yudha Nasi, he's sort of the link in Tor Shabal Peh between Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi. He was, uh, most Stam Mishnas are in the name of Rab Meir. And Rabbi Yochiman has stated that the Halacha always fo- follows a Stam Mishnah, Utana. And we're going to quote a Mishnah, a Stam Mishnah, a Mishnah that doesn't have a name. Mukhni if you have a wagon, we had this before, which is the, the wheels and the attached mechanisms below the wood part is separable. So Bishmanshi Nishmet, that when it's separate, we, there's no Ein Chibur law. It's not considered that it's connected in regarding Tum of the The Ein in that is law. If you're going to measure it for 40 saw, you don't measure with it. The mochni is not uh, only things that are in the wagon itself. If the wagon is big, can be can be saved 
from Tumas Mace, but not the Mukhni. The Ain Garna Sabishabis, you can't drag the Mukhni Bizman Shiesha Lemos. When there's money on the Mukhni, the car is Medaya. Ha'ain alemos. So if there's no money on it, charya. So it's permitted to drag it. Lechura, even though the money is on their ben hashmoshes, we learn mida de iskatsoi ben hashmoshes iskatsoi lekuliyoma. Anything that's muktza already ben hashmoshes is going to be muktza the whole day. So if now this mishnah says that this muchni is not uh, muktza, then obviously it doesn't hold of Rabbi Yehuda because Rabbi Yehuda holds isle muktza. On Rav Zera, the only way to answer it is to say that the money was not there all of Ben Hashmoshes. We have to say that otherwise we'd have a problem with Rav Yechelon. And therefore, since it was not there Ben Hashmoshes, that's why it's not Moksa the rest of Shabbos. On Yeshua Ben Levi, Pamachas Halach Rabbi Lidiusfera. He went to a place Diusfera. He paskin leniently, like Rabbi Shimon, that, you're, that Rabbi Shimon said that once the nair is extinguished, you could then touch the nair. The boilu. Is it only to be matir? Or did he did he did he want to is he passing the Isser? And and in and in a case where Rab Shimon by Nair he's mocked here, but in the other place, like for the for the by the the erector set menorah, is like the, the, the menorah set that was made out of pieces. Did he ask her that? And by Rabbi Shemini Matur the Nair, so take it. So it stands, we don't know the, an answer to that question. Rav Malkia, Ikla Lebe Rav Simloi. Rav Malkia visited Rav Simloi, the Tiltil Shrub, and he touched a candle, the Ikla Rav Simloi, and Rav Simloi was upset by that. Rav Yosi Glila Law, Ikla Lasri Rav Yosi Rav Chanina, he visited Rav Yosi, Tiltil Shrub of Ikla Rav Yosi Rav Chanina. And Rabbi Yossi was Makti. From a Voki, Lasser, Rabbi Yushub bin Levi, from a Voki, when he visited Rabbi Yushub bin Levi, Abba Metal Teshraga touched the candle. Kiikla Lasser, Rabbi Yushub bin Levi, Metal Teshraga. And by Rabbi Yushub, he did not touch the candle. I understand, Manusha. What do you want? Eek Rabbi Yudah Sphere Lay. If he holds a Rabbi Yudah, Levi Krabbi Yudah, Eek Rabbi Shimon's very Levi Krabbi Shimon. I mean, what? Why? He's acting one way and one way, and let him, let him be consistent. So, Loyal and Krabbi Shimon's Sphere Lay. He holds of no Moksa. We should have quoted Rabbi Yechelen the law of but when he was in the area of Rabbi Yechelen, he wanted to treat Rabbi Yechelen the Kabbalah. Okay. And as a Shomer Shivam, and also. Am Rav Yehuda. Shraga de Mishcha, a candle with oil, shari little tule. That you're allowed to touch. Dinafta also little tule. But if it had kerosene, it's moksa. Rabbi Yosef, by the naft and Avi Shaila Tultula, Rabbi Rabbi Yosef, they permitted touching a candle that the fuel was kerosene. Why? The whole b'chazil l'chasos beimon, because the candle could be used to cover another kli. So, Ravavi ikle be Rav, Ravavi visited Rav. Have a meisin be karbetina. His feet were covered with dirt. And he put his feet up on, uh, on like the bed of, uh, of uh, Rava. Atiba Purik made a Rava. Ikvid Rava. So Rava was upset. Boil it so weary. So he wanted to sort of punish him. And he, by punishing him, how do you punish a Talmud Chacham? You ask him very difficult kashas. Or like my time, Rava, Rava, Yosef, Tama, Tavayu. Why did Rabbi Rav Yosef 
go against the Psaac, uh that you were allowed, that, who said, that initially we said, since the kerosene stinks, that it's not, it's, it's not chazui, it's not roy for anything except for what it does. So even Rabbi Shimon would be moida, that it would be moksa. How come they all of a sudden said it's not moksa? So he knew the answer. Because you could use that item to cover another clue. So, so the Gemara says like this. You go in your backyard, you see a rock. A rock is muktzan shabbos. So why? Because it, 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 there's no use for it. You didn't, you didn't prepare it for use. But the Gemara is saying, now, if you're telling me even a kli, like a nair, could be used to cover another kli, so why can't we say that every rock in your backyard also should not be muktzah? Because you, you could use it to stop up a kli. Amrlei, there's a difference. Ha ikka toris kli Hani leka toris kli a candelabra has a, is a clee, has a shame clee. A rock is not a clee. So you need that as well. Milo Tanya, didn't we learn at Baraisa that Hasherim, these are like rings or nose rings. So they're not mok, so you can touch them in your backyard. But you will see, you can't go out with them, Rishusarabi. Because maybe you'll take them off to show to somebody. So why can you touch them? Because it's got a shame clear on it. it. Even though you're not wearing it. You understand? We're not talking about that you wore these things. They were just sitting in a box somewhere. So even if you touch them, Shalokaderach Malbush, you'd be allowed to do it. Because it's got a Torah's Kliyan. Vomer Ulamatam, Hoel Vekator's Kliyan. here, the distinction between a rock. And the candelabra, that Ravavi was able to come up with a good answer, and he did. Ravavi didn't embarrass Ravavi. Rami le Abaya Rabba. Abaya showed a stira to his Rebbe Rabba. Rabba and Rav Yosef were the Rebbeim for Abaya and Rabba. Tanya, Mois Rashem and Shabbat Nevi so you have leftover oil in the candle or in the plate. Also, right? That's Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Shimon Matu. Rabbi Shimon permits. Amal Rabbi Shimon Lesli Muksa. So that's Lachura, the way we've been learning all along. For I'll ask you a stira. Rabbi Shimon Oimer. So the din is that if you are a farmer, and you grow and you raise cattle. So the firstborn, the firstborn of an animal is a has a din bechor. It's got to be male. And the din of a bechor is you have to give it to the koyen. The koyen has to take that animal and offer it as a korban shlomi. So he can't do whatever he wants with it. He has to. And then, you can eat from it even because he can invite you to his suda because even non kohanim ate the meat of a shlomi. That's the normal case of the din of a bechor. Now, if a bechor got a mum, so you still have to give it to the koyin, but it now became the personal asset of the koyin. He doesn't have to bring it as a korban shlomi. You can't bring it as a korban. It's got a mum. So he, it now becomes, so it's a huge nafkamina between whether a bachor has a mum or not. And therefore, there are many dinim who can adjudicate the mum of a bachor. So there were experts, there were people who had smicha in inspecting bachoros. We did not allow the Kohen to come in and say, oh, I found a bachor. They were choyshesh that they inflicted their own, own mum because they had an incentive for it to become a personal financial asset as opposed to having to bring it as a corp. So with that as a background, Rabbi Shimon Oimer, if the animal didn't have a mum, Erev Yontif, and then on Yontif you find a mum, and technically 
at that point, you'd be allowed to shech the animal as your private animal and eat it because it's, it's not Roy for Corbin anymore. But you would not be able to do so because it's Muktza. Because it didn't have a mum from before Yontif. Now, how could, now, Lechura, Rabbi Shimon doesn't hold of Muktza. So how could Rabbi Shimon be saying that there's a concept of Eino Mina Mukhan? Which says, there's no comparison. Hasam, buy a candle that's burning. He has in mind that he knows, even Arab Shabbos, that that candle is going to stop burning at some point. Therefore, he can use the Shemin. The Shemin has not been completely put out of his mind because he knows that candles extinguish at some point. But by a Bechor, I mean, Arab Yontif has got a normal animal. He's gonna, he thinks that it's going to be a muktzah. So even there, Rabbi Shimon would be moide, that there would be a muktzah. First of all, so first of all, who says that the, mum, the animal get a muktzah? And even if you say it as a mum, so a mum could be a permanent blemish or it could be a passing blemish. You would have to paskin that this is a mum kavua and not a mum, a passing mum. So, number one, who says it'll get a mum? Number two, who says it'll be the right mum? And even if it's the right mum, you need a, a mumche. You need an expert at a person who could adjudicate mumim. So, a person doesn't have all that in mind. Therefore, if it happened on Yontif, it's mukza. Because you couldn't plan all those things. So, mostly from me, Barchama. So, I'll ask you a kasha. It says, Mefirin Nidorn B'Shabbos. The din is that if a man's wife makes a neder, his husband, the husband can be, can abolish the neder within 24 hours. So the din is, if the wife had made a ned there, I'm not going to eat today. And it's Shabbos. So the husband's allowed to be made for his wife's ned or even on Shabbos. Mithir in the dorm of Shabbos. Vin is in the dorm of Shabbos. And you can go ask a chacham to be matir the ned there. On Shabbos. As long as it was Tzorach HaShabbos. Why does he have to ask the, the, meat, is the It's the wife asking. No, no, because, no, no. If it's beyond 24 hours, the husband can no longer be made for oh, the nether. Oh, I see, yeah, it's beyond 24 hours. So, so okay. then, you, then you need to go to a Chacham to undo the nether. You go to a chacham, he, he tries to get you to have charata to, that you made the net there. He says, if you would have known this and this, would you have made the net there? If you say no, that's a Pesach to undo the net. But that, don't, that can, in a you don't need to go to a chacham the first 24 hours. The din is, let's say you find out that your wife had made a net there that affected Shabbos. You could go even on Shabbos to the chacham to ask the net. And the food that the woman and said she wasn't going to eat, becomes usher. Now, who knew that uh, uh, maybe it should be considered muktza, you know, heir of Shabbos? Because we're going to say, lema mi yemer to miskagik le baal. So first of all, how do we know that the baal uh, is going to be a ram who could be mefer? Right? So maybe we should have the same things. Same thought. It was. It was. It's not. It shouldn't be allowed to be eaten because we treat muktzah. Because who knows if this is going to happen? So awesome. Rapinchos beis rav. Zamer rapinchos beis rav. Kolam nayir. So that's finally no day. Any time a woman makes the ned there, it's always done im haskama sabal. It's assumed that it's with haskama sabal. So therefore, the food was not pushed away completely because the husband still had some kind of stake in it, and therefore now after he's made for the ned, she can. Per- Perf- perfectly go ahead and eat it. And doesn't, it doesn't ruin the concept that we made about the moon. 
by the Bukhor. Toshma, Nishalun in the dorm shall tzrach Shabbos per Shabbos. He said you could go to a Chacham to, to be Matir Neb. Ramai, Lema mi Yemer to his Kartele Chacham. I mean, finding a, 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 a mumcha who knew how to adjudicate women, that's not such an easy thing. Who knows that he's going to find it? It still should be mukhsa. So the Gemara says that's not a problem. See, by a neder, if you don't have a chacham, three regular people could be matir neder. Like all of us do, era of Rosh Hashanah. We are not smich, we, most people don't have smicha. So they're regular, they're considered hediotos. And you can sit as a bezin of three hediotos to be matir nedir. But you cannot, a hediot, even a bezin of three hediotos, cannot be matir amun. That is a special din that you need smicha, you need to have, a, you need to have certification, you need to be a mumcha, and it wouldn't work. So. So that's why there's a nafkamina by by bechor versus net. Rami leavai l'rav Yosef. Miyam Rav Shimon kafsim with the tal to law. We learned in Rav Shimon that while the nair was burning, you could not use it, but once it stopped burning, you could touch it. Kafsa in lo kafsa lo. It means it's only if it extinguished. If it's still burning, he couldn't move it. My timer. Huh? Dilma body did not get like Kavsa, because maybe by moving it, he's going to come to extinguish it. But the Gemara says it shouldn't be a problem. Anyways, Hashemin Rab Shimon, the Omer Dover Shemin is Kavin Mutter. Rab Shimon is our stalwart defender of the concept that if you didn't have Kavana, it's not Osir. So who cares if he touched the candle and he burned out? That was not his intent. So since it's not his intent, it shouldn't be permitted. The Tanya, Rabbi Shimon Oimer, Goy Rodim Kisei Mita Vesapsu, you could drag a bench, even if it made a ditch. So we learn a special criteria in Rabbi Shimon. If you're going to have Kavana, you would violate an Isser Deraisa. So Kilo Machavin goes Rabbi Shimon Rabbonu. So that type of action, even if you were not miskaven, Rab Shimon would be goyzer. So by extinguishing the flame, that is a malacha deraisa. So there, by a dovashe miskaven, even Rab Shimon is going to be is going to permit, is going to prohibit. But But even if, for example, if you drag the bench, and you made a ditch, and you had kavana to make the ditch, that's not an iser deraisa. That's only, because it's a, it's, it's, it derives from harisha. It derives from plowing. Choyresh. That's if you're choyresh kedarko with a, with a plow. But, but if you do, if you use a bench to make a ditch, that's only examined rabbana. So there, if you didn't have kavana, there Rabbi Shimon allows you to do it even so that's why there, that's why he does not allow you to carry a burning candle because even though you're not in his scabbing to extinguish it since if it gets extinguished it's Mr. Deraisa he's goiser as well it's very, very important this is a very important uh, modification of Rabbi Shimon's normal din Mosif Rava. So Rava is going to ask a question. So let's say there were people who sold garments and it had shatnas in it. So you can sell them a normal way to darken. The person, let's say, wearing it, who's selling it, he has to have kavana. He's only going to sell it, you know, to non-Jews, right? But if he's going to sell it, he has to have kavana not to have benefit in the summer from the garment or benefit in the winter from the garment. You can't have enough from cloth. But snuim, the people who were very careful about halacha, they would take a stick 
they would hang the clothes on the stick and not wear it at all to sell. Now the Gemara, the Gemara says like this, the ha'acha, the kimakavein, how come here, if you didn't have kavana, it was, it, was, it was allowed to wear it? If you didn't have kavana to benefit from it. Why? It's Isser Deraisa. We just modified Rabbi Shimon's concept to say that if it comes to an Isser Deraisa, Dover Shem is going to be Austria, even according to Rabbi Shimon. If the Chim Chavin Isser Deraisa, Ika Kilo Machavin Shari, Rabbi Shimon Lechatchila, how could Rabbi Shimon Matur Lechatchila? Amar Rava, so we reject everything we just said. Really, this qualification of Rabbi Shimon does not last scrutiny. So the reason over there, why Rabbi Shimon does not allow you to carry the candle while it's lit, new concept called, it becomes a base for a prohibited thing, says Rashi. The the candelabra itself and the oil and the wick are all subservient, or let's say, they are the base for the shalhevet, the flame. These kalim are tofel to the flame. He's not worried because of kviya. Really, it's a davar shem is kavin is mutter no matter it's derais or not derais. Gentlemen, I want to ask a question. Is today's block 46 or 47? I think tomorrow's block is 47, correct? Hello? Yes, I'm correct. Prepared, huh? Correct. Are you? Yeah, I'm pretty sure so, it's 47 so tomorrow. 47 I was going to do 47. Tomorrow. I was going to do 47 tonight so we can get ahead. Like we normally are. Normally, we were learning the block. We were learning tomorrow's block tonight. Is it too whatever? Much, too it's up much to tonight. You want to do half Austin tonight? Let's do half. 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 Let's do half to carry a, uh, you know, you know, like like a, a pan with dirt in it, you could carry that. It's not muktsa. And there's there's some spice in there, and the dirt was muktsa because you don't need it. So Rashi says. Since the, the pan you can carry, yes, there's dirt in there that is muktza, you can carry, the, you can carry a, two things. If one of them is permitted, one of them is not, you can carry it based on the permitted item. That's the concept. Person can carry his son, even though the son is holding a rock. Or a basket, and there's a stone there. It's normally mux. That's talking about a basket full of fruit, which implies nine three zero three five. Time of the ispe peri, because there's fruit. How less the peri low? But if it's just the basket and the stone, you can't carry it. So. How can you say Rabbi Hanina said you can carry something muktza with, with the kli itself? He was silent for one moment. So he answered that the case of the machta with the afer wasn't, you didn't carry it because of the machta. You carried it because there was some spice in there that was something that you would use. Yeah, but these, these items were not chashev. For any anybody's use, but the chitem chazulani maybe an ani would use it, but we don't go after either something is usable for everybody or not. Matanya big the anim laniyim. When it comes to tumah v'tahara, a small garment is if, and since aniyim will use it, it's but that's only for aniyim. Big the hashem lashirim, about aniyim lashirim lo. That means it's got to be uniform. Elam rabaya needed to have a graph shalrei. It's like a 
chamber pot that people would go to the bathroom in and they, because it smells, they wanted you to carry it outside the house, even though there's no use for it. So here as well, it's gonna be treated like a graf shall rain. So I'm a rubbish day trivis I don't accept it. Chad a graf shall rain moist. Behind the moist, this pan with this dirt is not disgusting. The oh, graf shall rain nickly. The graf shall rain is uncovered behind mixi, and these are covered. And the pan is covered. So Elam Rav Kiya bin Rav Nachman have a metatlin kanuna agav kitma. They would carry a pan of dirt and afal gavdik aleshi raisim. Even though there were wooden fragments there, and because because of the pan, even though there were shivrei eitzim that nobody nobody would use that. But But if there were leftover wicks, then they are they will be they will make the whole thing muktza. Amra baya, but that's beglila shadu. That's a das yachid. That was Allah learned in Gola, but we actually will allow carrying of a pan even though there's dirt. Says the Shulchan Aruch, Klal Karvula, Tiltul Machta Kidavar Meshamish. So if something, if there's a something in a pan that normally would be muktza like a rock, but since the pan you can use, you can carry it. If there's things in it that are permitted, like fruit and other things, you'd certainly be allowed to carry it, even if there's something that's not allowed to be carried. Levi Bar Shmuel found these chachamim at the door of Rav Lund. Um, he asked them, "How long is your mitzvah shall tarsim b'shabes? Can you rearrange this sort of folded-up bed on Shabbos?" Um, Amulei Shapir Dami, yes, you're allowed to. Also, come and Rav Yehuda Amar Har Rav Shmuel Amar Tavaya Machzer Mitzvah Shol Tarsim B'Shabes Chayiv Chate. How could they mat here? Rav Shmuel said, "You're Chayiv Chate. It's Isur Deraisa." Of being metak and kli, and meisvei amazur kenei menorah b'shabes. If you reassemble the menorah on Shabbos, chayv chatis kenei sayodin. If you, if if it's made broken up already pre-separated, you should not lechatchila put it together. But v'mechzer patra v'los. And Rav Simai Oimer Karen Agula. If it's a horn. Like a French horn that's round and is broken up, and you reassemble it, chayiv. If it's a straight horn, not round, potu. So we see that how could we allow that bed to be reassembled? It was made out of pieces. We brought a lot of rias that things that are made out of pieces, and you assemble, it's also on Shabbos. So the one that mattered in Adamar Kiyaitana, they had a Tana to rely on. The Tana, the Rab Shimon. Malbinos Hamita. This, the, this was like a frame that then they would weave, I guess, cloth to make a bed. The Karas Hamita, the legs of a bed. Ulevachim shall skib it. Some kind of bow. Rashi says, Arblestra. You you use that to pull back the arrow. Lo yazir. If these things are separated, there is you know they're assembled, and you're going to assemble it, but they've been separated. Lo, you shouldn't put them back together. But the mechzer potter of it's not chayv the rice. The lo yitka. And should not blow. You, you should not hammer these uh, parts of the bed together well. But if you chayv chatis, that's going to be a, a tikkun kli. You're going to be also minat torah. But if it was loose, then it's permitted. 
He had a Galilean bed, which was these assembled beds. He is reassembled in Anyantiv. My daiter. Binyam and It's it's like it's like putting it together not in a normal way. And it's not considered binyan. But he deserved the right select. He said about a meek, but we said Patra Balasar. No one said it's you're permitted to do it. Because it was not tied tightly. So if you leave it untied, if it's not tied so tightly, it would be even much of the Then we say, You can put a clee under a sparking fire while they're burning so that it won't cause damage. But you shouldn't put water in there. Because it'll lead to extinguishing. Now the Gemara asks, how can you put the kli there to allow the sparks? The sparks are mutza. By them gathering in the kli, you're not going to be able to touch the kli. No, because the nitzoytsois go away. It's not considered like they have physical, they're not a physical entity. So it's not, you haven't been mavatal the kli. And then we said, don't put water in it. Is our Mishnah only Rabbi Yosef Dhamma Goyram Lakibui Asur? Now, gentlemen, if you have a flame burning and you extinguish it, so you've extinguished it. But if the sparks fly, if you've put a pan with water next to the candle and the sparks fly and land in the water, it's a grumma. You didn't do anything to the flame. They, they extinguish themselves on the water. So, grama is a machlokas in Shabbos. Is grama permitted? Is grama also? Well, here if we say you're not allowed to bring a kli and fill it with water, you're holding that even grama is also. Garma kibur also. So, it must be our Mishnah's Rabbi Yossi, who is that Tanda? Pray to the Tizbur, is that so? Hey, Madame Rabbi Yossi, for Shabbos. He doesn't allow you to bring a kli on Shabbos if there's like a sparking candle. But the Arab Shabbos, me Omar, did he say that Arab Shabbos, you can't prepare the kli there from before? Maybe it's a fine. We're talking about Shabbos. That you're allowed to put a kli there on Shabbos. Certainly Arab Shabbos. Then it says, Arab Shabbos. You can't put water there even Arab Shabbos. Certainly Shabbos not. And, and, and not Arab Shabbos. So, how do you, so where do you think that it's so partial that Rabbi Yossi would allow you to do it Arab Shabbos? So on Rav Rashi, our Mishnah could be Chachamim as well, who hold that normally by Grama is Mutter. You are hastening the time says Rashi, Zimun Kibula Day, Balam Chabi Mamish. If you do it on Shabbos, it's Mamish Kibu. Therefore, they're Goiser Erev Shabbos. Because if you don't Goiser Erev Shabbos, they'll do it on Shabbos. And on Shabbos, it's, it's Nisr the Rice. Hard Lach Kibu, Hard Lach Kibu, Hard Lach Kibu. Okay, Baruch Hashem. So we will do.